Hey guys, Greg Benz here, and today I wanna to show you how to create a beautiful black and white image of a flower. We're gonna address a couple specific issues. One is that the green in the tips and the base of this flower is kind of distracting. It pulls your eyes away from the main part of the image. So the black and white conversion will take care of that. And the second is that we're gonna use the contrast and the brightness functions in Lumenzia in order to shape these flowers. Unlike my previous black and white demo on a mountain where I used the dodge and burn features, We'll use contrast and brightness to achieve a similar effect, but on a larger scale. Let's begin. Go and click on the new black and white layer. And of course you can play with the yellows and the greens to target how these get converted. So if we look at the tip here, we don't want this to be so dark. In the original default conversion, it's kind of distracting to have this dark tip to this flower once it's in black and white. So let's bring up the yellows, let's bring up the greens to the point where we sort of just neutralize that tonality. So it's really kind of light there and just kind of blends in seamlessly. Now in doing so, we've made the top of the flower look better, but the base looks pretty plain. It's overlit on the stem here. So what we need to do is apply black and white in two different phases. Let's invert our mask with Command or Control I to make it black, hitting B for a brush. Just freehand paint over the edges of the flower here. So now we've created a black and white conversion that will be ignored when you go and do a second black and white conversion. So now when you add black and white, it isn't changing things. You've already made that conversion up above. So the first layer is going to take care of the top. And now on this layer, which doesn't need a mask, we can go and change our green and yellow conversion to bring them down a bit and make things look more interesting at the base here. If we kind of bring up a little bit, the greens and yellows right around there. I think it's looking pretty good. So it's a nice start for a black and white. Let's select all the layers, hit Command G to group them, and we'll just call this BW for our black and white. We're now ready to begin making tonal adjustments to the photos themselves. What I wanna do is push this down. It's very high key. Push it down towards sort of a middle gray that'll give us more room to then push the highlights and shadows from there versus having everything start from the highlights. So what we can do is grab a brightness adjustment that targets the lights and bring this brightness down. So we're just sort of mellowing these flowers out, pushing them more towards a middle gray, and that just gives us more room to now selectively lighten or darken them. And the next thing I wanna do is take care of this overlit part of this flower. It's very bright on the inside and it's taking away from the feeling of shape. I want the middle of these flowers to be dark and the petal edges to be lighter to give it shape. So if we select that with a lasso and then just look for something that's gonna target that area, maybe something like lights three, grab a brightness contrast layer and grabbing the brightness slider, bringing that left. See how we're subtracting that light out from before to after. And if I push it any further than there, it starts to kind of hollow out. It doesn't look quite natural. So maybe around there and now grab um, secondary adjustment right around here, see if we can't get just a little bit more out of that around lights three, bringing this down again, just trying to, there we go, giving it a little bit darker interior. So now the basic look of the flowers are right. We just need to enhance what's already there. So let's bring out a little more contrast in the base of these flowers. If we lasso select the base of the flower, click on contrast in Lumenzia, you automatically get this little pop of contrast and it's done at low opacity. So just slide the opacity to the right and you can see we get a much better adjustment there targeting that particular stem. We'll go and grab same thing on this one, go and do a contrast adjustment there, bring that opacity up as well, and maybe see what happens if we do it to the stems here as well. Let's grab the contrast and that is looking okay, but probably not the adjustment I want. So let's get rid of that. And instead, let's select these and we'll just do a regular brightness contrast adjustment in the area. We probably don't need a luminosity mask to do what we want there. So we'll just bring out a little bit more contrast, just going from before to after, just slightly darkening that area down. And then one more major contrast adjustment. If we grab this area here, click on contrast, and then bring up the opacity, and that's just bringing up more shape in this flower here. And it's done a nice job around these edges, but 
the outer parts of the flower aren't really as lit. So let's go and work on those. Let's grab this area here. Take a look at using something like a lights luminosity selection, maybe like a lights two, lights three. Let's take a look at the mid-tone masks. Zone C. It's trying to grab those darker areas that I wanted to lighten up a bit. Let's grab that as a brightness adjustment and bring that through, which is just lightening up that edge of the leaf. And then now we can grab that that's been evened out. Do it one more time. We'll just do this one through a lights luminosity selection, probably zone E, another brightness adjustment. Bring that up and just adding this effect that light is falling on the leaf here. Do the same thing to the other side of the petal here. So lassoing with zone E, brightness adjustment, and we'll bring up that brightness there. And we'll just kind of keep working these petals of the flower doing the same thing. So zone E, lasso, select. It gets a little repetitive because we're doing basically the same thing on the same range of tones but you want to create each one as its own separate adjustment so that you have full control over how exactly it's going to be applied to it. So it's important to create these as separate layers. It just gives you that extra lever of control. Bring that up and then this little pedal here. Let's bring this guy out as well. So just kind of doing the same thing again here and bring up the brightness. And now that we've brought up these pedal edges, Let's bring down the interior. So we'll create a lasso selection and we're gonna darken the shadows. So the shadows are gonna be somewhere in the darks here. So something like darks two, create that as a brightness adjustment, but this time we're going to bring the brightness down in order to create a little bit more shape. And now I'm gonna target a little bit more of the middle here. So look at this again with the darks. Got the wrong one there. Maybe a little more loosely around darks two. Grab that and bring this brightness down here as well. Just creating more shape to that flower. Same thing on this flower. So take a look at the darks three, darks two. Bring that brightness down. And you can see that shape is really starting to kind of shine through. And then kind of do something similar here. Grab our shadow values and just darken that down a bit there. Just subtle little things to grab the areas that should be lit and make them lighter and grab the areas that should be dark and make them a little bit selectively darker. And I know we've already kind of traced over some of these petal edges, but I want to make them even brighter, a little bit more control here, really kind of shape the edges of those flowers there. And once again, here on this flower edge, Probably need to reselect that. Let's try that again. A little bit better selection. And I needed to create my zone E. And now I'll apply this. So get a little bit sloppy here. I'm working a little too quickly. But just subtle little adjustments that kind of bring out that shape. And then back in here on this flower, let's see if we can't. Uh, I'll try a contrast adjustment here because I want to darken the middle and lighten these edges, which I think actually work pretty well, with the exception that back in here, I wouldn't mind taking that little wedge and darkening it down a little bit. So it looks like that's around zone six, and we'll darken that thing down. So we're getting a nice overall shaping to things, grabbing this leaf here. Probably zone D isn't quite as bright and brighten this up a bit here. And let's take a look at the overall adjustment we've now made. Going back to the original black and white adjustment, which is this grouping down here, we had this and we've added all this shaping to these flowers. It looks so much more interesting now than where we started. Probably grabbing just a little bit more adjustment here, just final little touches Try and get this exactly the way that I want it to be. And I want to add an overall contrast adjustment to this image. So I'll just grab just a basic curve layer. Clicking on the target adjustment tool, as we move across the image, you can see where we would be affecting the curve. And it's really in the center of this curve. So I'm going to grab the curve 
and just create sort of a general S curve, which has taken what we've already done and just enhanced it to further shape these leaves. Lastly, I'm gonna click for a new solid color adjustment, grabbing blue. It's gonna to tone the image, and of course it looks very dramatic, just as it did in my previous black and white where I used a, a lookup table. In this case with a solid color, it's even more so. Just bring the opacity back down to about the 10% mark. Can you see from before to after how that little touch of blue really does a nice job of adding some subtle emotion to the image. You wouldn't even necessarily know that this is not truly black and white, but it does look a lot more powerful. And you can see here from the original black and white to where we've landed here or versus the original color image, which is very flat and the attention is not coming to the middle of flowers to the finished image here, which is looking a lot more interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified as I continue to release new tutorials.